The death toll in the mass shooting in Las Vegas has risen to 59. Police has made a massive haul of firearms and explosives from the attackers identified 65-year-old Stephen Pedock. He even had ammonium nitrate in his car. Police says he had an arsenal of 42 guns, 23 in his hotel room and the rest in the house at Mesquite. Besides 59 people, he killed Pedock, injured more than 500 people in the attack on the county music festival. Pedock fired from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay and killed Himself on the spot, the mass shooting has sparked a debate on the U.S. gun law, but the White House says it is premature to discuss policies on gun control yet. In the days ahead, we will grieve as a nation. We will honor the memory of those lost as a nation. And we will come together, united as one nation, under God and indivisible. So far, it is believed that the paddock was alone in carrying out the attack. His motivation is still unknown. We are currently standing at 527 uh, for individuals injured and individuals that have died or passed away, 59. Some explosives and several thousand rounds of ammo, along with some electronic uh, devices that we are evaluating at this point. People over to the hospital, okay? okay. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for the massacre, but U.S. officials rejected the claim. As this event unfolds, we have determined to this point no connection with an international terrorist group. As this investigation continues, we will continue to work with our partners to ensure that this is factually, thoroughly, and absolutely investigated. The gunman's father, Benjamin Hosking Parak, was once on the FBI's most wanted list. In fact, he was on the top 10 most wanted list on June 9, 1969. He was wanted as he escaped from a federal prison in Texas on 31st December 1968, where he was serving time for robbery. The family of the shooter is in the shock. The brother Eric says that he makes no sense why his brother would go on the killing spree. My brother did a horrible, horrible thing. But I, and I, I have nothing but condolences. Ask my neighbors who I am and what I am. I'm the guy who goes around and helps everybody get out from under their trees after the hurricane. I've lived in this neighborhood for 25 years. I'm, what the world? I, I have nothing but condolences and grief. My wife is, a basket case. She's totally destroyed. It doesn't make any sense that he killed those people. It makes no sense that he did that. There's no... My brother, who talked to my mom on the phone two weeks ago, I'm just... It doesn't make sense that that guy could do this. When did you talk to him? Violence, violence. He has no history of violence in any way, shape, or form. They'll talk to his girlfriend. They'll find this out. He's never hit any... Been divorced twice. He's friends with both his good friends, with both of his exes. Did he have financial problems? That's possible. I have no direct financial links with him at all, and we don't talk about money. Did he have a fascination with weapons? No. He had a couple of handguns. I've always. Is, is there any history of mental illness in your family? He had a couple of, you know, interesting handguns. I don't know that there were any problems at all. Our belief is that he was perfectly fine. I, we talked to him, my mother talked to him on the phone after the hurricane. We all talked to his mother after we got power and stuff back and said nothing about anything being wrong. The U.S. President and the First Lady led a solemn ceremony and a moment of silence in the honor of the victim of the White House. The Empire State Building went dark to mark the shooting and highlight the problem of gun violence. Eyewitnesses described the horror of the moment when the attack happened. Fifth song into the concert, and I was, I forget which song it was he was playing, but I had this videotaping it. And all of a sudden, here in the background, something that sounded like fireworks.
going off. It's going pop, 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 but it was like 50 to 100 pops in a row. So it makes you wonder, well, that's a long popping uh, time frame for, for something to go off. When I heard what was a red tat tat, and I thought somebody, it sounded like somebody had thrown a brick of fireworks at the front entrance of the VIP um, entrance down there on the sidewalk. And that went off, and I thought that was really weird. So I walked up to the top of the stairs to go back into the tent, the VIP tent, and the bartenders were saying, Get down, get down, there's been a shooting. I'm like, What? The, what? It's those firecrackers. And they're like, No, get down. And people would start dropping down all around me. Um, and then I jumped down, and I said, I got to get back out there and get my wife because she was at the front section of the gate closest to the stage. So the man lay bait, the shooter was behind us, shooting down over the top of her, and then down in front on the other side of us. And we were just sitting in our seats, and it sounded like fireworks. We heard pop, 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 pop. And we looked and we were looking for like lights and lights never happened. And then we heard it again. And then all the lights went off on the stage. And then people started running. And we like waited a second because we didn't know if it sounded like, you know how like the speakers blow out? I thought it was like a power surge or whatever. And then people were running. We held off a second and then she said, get down, get down. So we got down, everybody was running. And then we were stuck like in that corner over where all the food people were. So we couldn't go anywhere, so we just laid down in the bleachers, and then people had broke through like the barriers where the people were selling the food, so we just got out that way and we ran out that backside and hid behind the police cars. My heart's broken for the family, for the people, the people who were lost. It's just in mankind for doing these, these sick people doing this stuff, to innocent people who are just, you know, enjoying life. I'm just, I'm disappointed. And then um, just mass crowds start running at me, and I'm like not even sure what's happening, but I hear there's an there's an active shooter, and I just pick up my guitar and start running. And the whole it, it was very traumatizing seeing all all these people in fear for their lives, and hard for me not to be in fear for my life as well. And I just kind of took off running. The shooting in Las Vegas has led to renewed calls for tougher gun laws in the United States of America. According to an editorial in the New York Times, there have been 521 mass shootings in the U.S. in the past 477 days. The big question is, will the Congress act finally? The Democrats are seeking tougher gun laws, but the Republicans are still non-committal. Listen in to some reactions that have come in. It's become a kind of sick complicity. And I hope that in the coming days, we can come together, Republicans and Democrats, to start talking about, at the very least, some baby steps to show the people of Las Vegas, to show the people of Orlando, to show my constituents, my friends in Sandy Hook, that silence is no longer an option. We can't let this become the new American normal. We can't just shrug our shoulders when we see over 30,000 Americans shot and killed year after year after year. We can't sit back and do nothing while hundreds of our fellow Americans are shot in one night simply because they went out to hear a music concert. So as you can see that this killing spree has sparked a debate in the American uh, government on tougher gun controls law, though uh, it is not clear as it has been claimed that you know he was an ISIS agent or he was a late convert, but the fact of the matter is the 500 people are injured, 59 people lost their life, and uh, it was a lone wolf of attack which took place in Las Vegas.